there are some people who wake up at 5 am and hit the gym every day while others just hit the snooze button and go back to sleep so what is the difference and why are some people just more disciplined than others See, discipline is not just about willpower or motivation. It's actually about something else that is going on in the brain. And that is what we are talking about in today's video. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Siddharth Warrior and welcome to my YouTube channel where we talk about your brain and your health. If you've not subscribed to the channel yet, do so. You'll see a lot more such videos on your timeline. Also, it means a lot to me. So let's talk about the neuroscience of discipline and how can you hack your brain to get more disciplined. So first, let's take a look at the brain and understand where discipline is coming from. And for that, I'm going to open up my iPad. So this is your brain and in your brain is the prefrontal cortex, which is the evolved part of the brain. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for impulse control and long term planning. So if you decide that in five years time, I want to be doing this, that's your prefrontal cortex. And if somebody in the middle comes up and says, Hey, do you want a piece of chocolate? And if you can say no, that is also your prefrontal cortex. Now behind the prefrontal cortex is a part called as the striatum. The striatum is the part of the brain that is responsible for forming habits. So anything that you routinely do on a day to day basis, the striatum kind of takes over. So you can think of the striatum as a sort of vice president. The president does not have to take all the decisions. The vice president can take all the smaller decisions on a day to day basis. So for example, the decision to brush every day is not taken by your prefrontal cortex. It is now taken by the striatum. Now behind the striatum is your limbic system that contains an important part called as the amygdala. Now the amygdala is responsible for your stress and emotional regulation. So every time something important happens in your environment and your brain thinks, wait, should I be paying attention to this? That is the amygdala getting activated. So where does discipline come from? So initially when you decide that tomorrow I want to go to the gym, that decision is coming from your prefrontal cortex. So step one is from your PFC. Now suppose if you keep doing that and you keep going to the gym, eventually that decision goes from your PFC to your striatum, which is level two of discipline. Now it means that it has become a habit and it doesn't take so much effort because every time your PFC has to make a decision, you have to put in effort. That is why it gets tiring. Now imagine Imagine if your PFC is really trying to decide that you have to go to the gym, but your amygdala constantly keeps interrupting by saying, instead of this, should we do this? Instead of the gym, should we watch Netflix or should we eat an ice cream? Now this constant interruption to the PFC can get exhausting. That is why your PFC cannot take too many decisions at once because it simply gets tired. Bechara hai PFC, wo thak jata hai. So now you'll understand why discipline is not this infinite resource that you have. You have a limited amount of willpower and the more you waste it on small decisions, the less you will have to make on a larger decision. This principle is seen very well in a supermarket where you might go in thinking that I have this list of groceries to buy and that's all I will get. But after some time, because you are faced with so many choices, you will see biscuits, you will see ice creams. Your brain is just tired of saying no, no, no. And after a while, it simply starts saying yes to everything that comes in front of it, which is why by the end of the supermarket, once you are at the checkout counter, everybody just picks up a few chewing gums or a nail cutter or something random because now your PFC cannot take decisions anymore. And that's how marketing works. If you want to improve your discipline, how will you do it? Let me take you through it step by step. Step number one is to tweak your environment. Remember, your brain does not exist in a vacuum. It is constantly influenced by everything that it sees around it. So if you say that you want to go on a low calorie diet, but if you are surrounded by chocolates and chips, your brain is just tired of saying no for 10 minutes and then it starts eating everything. So your environment is probably the most important factor that decides how much discipline you have. So the way to understand this is that if you are surrounded by X number of things, all of those things are cues. They affect your brain and make your brain think certain things. So if you can change the cues that you are surrounded by, you can now change your thought pattern. So for example, if you want to go to the gym the next day, just keep your gym clothes and your shoes right next to your bed so that as soon as you wake up, you will see it. Now there is less resistance for you to figure out what to wear and where are your shoes. Everything is waiting and that sets up a cue in your brain that, ha, mujhe gym jana hai. Yes, I have to go to the gym. And a way of changing the environment to reduce negative habits is by 
keeping your phone in a different room to avoid distraction or to reduce scrolling. Simply by changing the environment, you can change the way that you think. Because remember, as long as discipline is a decision that you have to keep taking again and again, you have already lost. You cannot sustain that. So once you've organized your environment, step number two is to reduce friction. You may have heard of the term cognitive fatigue, which means your brain getting tired of taking multiple decisions one after the other. And the reason for this is that your brain is kind of lazy, but it is by design. Because the prefrontal cortex uses up so much energy to take one decision, your brain is very stingy when it comes to taking complex decisions. It would prefer if the limbic system were to take things by instinct or impulse. So in other words, the prefrontal cortex does not want too many choices. It would prefer if the limbic system directly makes the choice for it. So if you want to reduce cognitive fatigue, you need to reduce friction. Simplify your life so that in all the important areas, you don't have too many choices. Try to keep a similar breakfast routine, a similar workout schedule. The less choices you have to make, the less fatigue your prefrontal cortex goes through. Step number three is all about habit formation. And for this, I'm going to refer to James Clear's excellent book, Atomic Habits. He talks about the four laws of behavior change, which is make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy and make it satisfying. These four laws are designed designed to affect your brain in different ways. By making your habit obvious, the visual cues will directly trigger your striatum and that triggers habit formation. By making it attractive, you have dopamine released in anticipation. So you find yourself looking forward to doing that act. By making it easy, you are lowering friction and reducing the decisions your prefrontal cortex has to take. And by making it satisfying, you're setting up positive reinforcement. So every time you do that habit and you get a reward, you will feel that, oh wow, I need to do this again. That brings me to step number four, which is an important part of setting up your environment. And that is the people. I would say the most important part of your environment is the people that you hang out with and the kind of thoughts that you have and the actions that you take are very closely determined by who you talk to, what kind of books you read and who do you discuss your life problems with. So whatever is that activity that you want to be disciplined about, try to surround yourself with people who are as passionate about it as you. And that being said, while it's important to be around people who are determined and focused, it's also important to have people who can calm you down and help you regulate. So you need people for both focus and for calmness. And finally, I want you to change the way you think about discipline because discipline is not an output. It is not something that you bring to the environment. Discipline is more like an input. It is something that the environment brings to you. So remember that change your environment to change how disciplined you are. Because trying to be disciplined in a chaotic environment is like trying to meditate while in a rock concert. It's not impossible, but you are just making life difficult for yourself. So to quickly recap the brain hacks you need to follow to be more disciplined. Step one is to change your environment to add more positive cues. Step two is to reduce friction and reduce the cognitive load in your brain. Step three is to follow the habit forming laws of behavior change in atomic habits. Step four is to change the people that you surround yourself with. And step five is to change the way you think about discipline, not as an output, but as an input from your environment. I hope this video helps you in your journey and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone. Take